All right, hello everyone. So I want you to remember when you were a kid and everything seemed to make you smile. Like, these are pictures of me. Uh, when I was five years old, I used to walk around the house with a diaper on my head um, and that was what made me happy. But nowadays, if I did that, you'd look at me like I was crazy. Also, when I was four years old, I loved little sandwiches like peanut butter and jelly. And that was something that made me smile, uh, without a doubt. But one thing I loved the most was when my sister used to sing to me. So we're going to do a sing-along. You ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. That was pretty good. So you see, happiness can be contagious, but it's only if you let it. I don't believe that happiness is a feeling. I believe it's a choice, a choice that you make, and you all made that choice. Some of you even sang. So some of you who didn't make that choice, though, you, you know, you're probably looking at all the rest of us like, what are these people doing? For instance, I want to play a video of a woman that I think makes happiness contagious, that you can tell that she's happy. So let's take a look. <laughs> All right, so you see, and if you watched it from the very beginning, obviously, you could see that everyone behind her was like straight-faced. And then all of a sudden, they all started smiling. They were all really happy. And you could see she's in her element. She has better dance moves than I do, which is really hard to come by. But what would happen if someone close to her, let's say her husband, walks down that row, sees his wife dancing, getting into the groove, and says, what are you doing? You're embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing me. And why are you so happy? We all know this feeling, or at least I do, that when you're at your highest high, there's always somebody that's going to bring you down that might say, what are you doing? Why are you so happy? And it is our very interactions that can affect and do affect our emotions. Harvard researchers have actually confirmed, and yes, I did study this, I looked into it, I Googled it, actually. Uh, so Harvard researchers actually confirmed that it is our relationships, our closest relationships, that can affect our happiness, our level of happiness. But before this study even existed, well before it even existed, my grandmother used to teach me this when I was a little kid. She always said that if you surround yourself with happy people, then you'll be happy. And if you surround yourself with positive people, you'll be positive. She never lived for just herself. She lived for us. She lived for her family. And one thing that she used to tell us, and this is my twin sister and I and my other sister. I have a brother, but I don't really talk about him a lot. Uh, so she used to tell us to love one another. She always said, that love one, loving one another means to care for other people, to cherish other people, to do things for other people, and not just for yourself. Because if you love other people and you care for them, then in turn, you'll be happy too. And me and my siblings used to get in fights all the time. And my parents are back there, they'll tell you. We got in so many arguments. And one thing my grandmother used to say is, no matter what happens, always end the day on a positive. Because if you don't, then the next day, you're going to start back on that negative. For my grandmother saw the value in life. She valued her life, and she valued it at that 100%, that highest high. So she lived every day at that 100%, and by the end of the day, for some reason, somehow, no matter what happened, she ended it at 100%. And growing up, and that's me too, bald, uh, growing up, I was like, what are you talking about? How is it possible for a teenager, if you're a teenager in here, how is it possible for you guys to stay at 100% when you get to school and you have all of these interactions and you're going through your most awkward stage of development, okay, and those are me too, um, you know, we all have them, all right? There's proof. So I was, at this time in my life, I was like, how am I supposed to maintain 100% when everything in life, all of these interactions that I was going through were negative? When I, you know, when I was six years old and my teeth were really big and I remember my mom bringing me to the dentist and I had to get them cut down. And you can see in the middle, I had braces until I was a junior in high school, which is not really known. And I was wearing hand-me-downs every single year because I have two other sisters. So you see, 
it is those interactions that play a role in our emotions. And at this time in my life, I could never see myself standing here. I was extremely self, like I was always self-assessing, always looking at myself like there was something wrong with me because I was dealing with people that were saying that to me. And I didn't put any effort into my happiness. I didn't even think about it. And it wasn't until I got older, like older now, that I realized what my grandmother was saying. In college, I studied science. And with science, we all know, comes math. And one of my classes that I'll never forget was physics. And it was all equations. And my professor said to me, if you can't calculate something, if you can't show me proof, you can't give me a numerical value, then it doesn't exist. And I thought about what my grandmother said, and I thought about what my professor said, and I said, well, if I can't calculate my happiness, then it doesn't exist, right? So I came up with a system. And I hope you all get to use it. You have it in your bags. Right, so this is called the life point value chart. It's completely made up, and it's something that I like to do uh, to help me to put effort into my happiness. So you see, we have positive actions or positive interactions throughout the day. And then we have negative interactions. And the science teacher and me had to put it into a data table. And I'm gonna show you the graph that I do in a minute. So you can see a couple of these. I'll do some examples. Like the, this morning, I woke up with a pimple right before a TEDx. Uh, so that's minus five points on my life. Right? I started off with 100, and I was at 95. Um, and then if I wanted to get those points back, maybe I would hold a door for somebody and smile awkwardly at them so that they smile back at me. So I can get those three points back. So this system, we all do. You might be looking at me like I'm crazy, but we all do this. If I was to ask you, what's your happiness score today? You might say, I have an 85. Oh, well, why? Well, this guy, you know, he was driving too slow in front of me. We all know this. So I want you guys to think to yourself right now what your score is. Are you at 100% happiness right now? Okay, so I'm going to plot uh, an example for you of my day today. Okay, so this is the value of happiness, like my grandmother said. I'm going to always start off at 100%. So there I am. That's my happiness level. That's 6.30 in the morning when I woke up. And I noticed in the mirror that I got a pimple. There I am, okay? Drop down five points. I get in my car and I look at my gas tank and I see I have no gas. So I'm like, fine, that doesn't, that's not taking any points off my life. Let me get to the gas station. Get to the gas station only to figure out that I forgot my wallet. Boom. I'm all the way down to zero, almost zero. I'm freaking out. I'm like, I have to do a TEDx. I have to talk in front of all these people. I'm going to be late. I'm panicking. And it's all of that, those things that I'm thinking about within myself. I'm thinking about myself again, right? I'm thinking about all these things. And I'm back down to zero. Now, if I didn't have this system in place that I completely made up, then I would be stuck there. And we all know that there are people in here that you get stuck there, down there. And you can't get yourself out of it. And the best way to get yourself out of it is to identify what makes you happy and try to, to recognize it. Because if you make a choice to be happy, you can get yourself up from there in a heartbeat. So I'm at the gas station, and I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm down here, I'm freaking out. And I look at the gas attendant, and I'm smiling, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, sir. I don't have any money. And he looks at me, and he goes, it's OK, because I was freaking out. I was panicking. He goes. It's all right, the gas is on the house. I'm like, the gas is on the house? Like, who, who gives someone free gas? So I was like, that's so great. So I jumped right back up, right? I get here to TEDx, and my parking spot's taken. So I'm back down. So you can see, obviously, we know what the pattern's going to be. It's going to be an up and down battle. And all of us have that throughout a day. And that's normal. We're supposed to have these interactions. But it's the way that you choose to get out of them that counts the most. So I started doing this, and I, I really, throughout the whole day, I started to plot my points, and I started to recognize something. If you look at this picture, and hopefully you know what this is, it resembles something. Raise your hand if you know what it resembles. Okay. So it resembles an electrocardiogram, which is the measure of your heartbeat. So I started to think, maybe that's what my grandmother was saying. Maybe what she was saying was that if you, if you value your happiness, if you recognize life and you live life to the fullest, then happiness is ultimately your heartbeat, right? Because if you're not happy, then are you truly living? 
And you have to be able to make a choice to be happy in order to live life. So I just wanted to say thank you for giving me back those 15 points I lost earlier today. And I just want you all to live life and be happy.